And don't stop till we tell you. <laughs> That's excellent. Very All right. good. We're here in the backyard of esteemed referee Arthur McCanty, 86 years young. Uh, the referee for the fight of the century between the first fight between Muhammad Ali and Joe Frazier in 1971. The author of a recent rele recently released book called Arthur McCanty Inside the Ropes which was published by McBooks earlier this year. Well, Arthur, you mentioned that um, <clears throat> it was hard to get your book published initially because the publishers were telling you that boxing is dead. We had completed uh, the book and we couldn't, we couldn't move it because the publisher, all, all of them said, all right, boxing's dead. If Muhammad Ali, the greatest book, didn't sell, how can you expect to sell? So we, we, we're not gonna handle anything. But lo and behold, but maybe a year or two later, all of a sudden, bang, a real mm -hmm. explosion, everything, everybody, TV, the lady boxing. Right. You've been involved with boxing as a referee since 1954. You've seen a lot of ebbs and flows, ups and downs. I'm sure you've heard that before. I know in my 30 years of boxing, I'm constantly hearing that boxing is dead, but it never goes away. That's right, and uh, it will never go away because boxing, is here to stay because they used to have the bare knuckle days with John L. Sullivan and all, and uh, and here's a continuation of boxing, still going. Well, Arthur, you've you've officiated bouts with some of the biggest names of the last century: Muhammad Ali, Emil Griffith, Carlos Ortiz, uh, Ingemar Johansson, Floyd Patterson, right up until the last fight that you did when you were 80, 81 years old. But no. here you are, you know, refereeing fights into your 80s. That's unheard of. Well, I could have done more. You know, what, 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 why I, I left, and I really shouldn't have left because I'm still very active, as you can tell. Uh, I felt that at 36 years in the town of Hempstead, in charge of all the physical fitness programs, I felt that when my contemporaries were all young college people, I figured that Gee, they must come in every day and they see me there. Why, why, isn't he re why isn't he retiring, you know? And that got to me, you know, I felt like I'm, 36 years was enough. You officiated uh, the fight between uh, Floyd Patterson and Ingemar Johansson, and you mention in the book that that was one of the, probably the time that you were the most affected by the outcome of a bout when you saw Ringo Mario Hansen un uh, unconscious on the, uh, on the canvas. What do, you, yeah. what do you recall about that? Well, I'll tell you, uh, I was very, very concerned, and I, I thought that he, he wouldn't be around much longer because his, uh, it was his right leg that was quivering, quivering, and blood was just dripping down this way. I, oh, my goodness. Because when I saw that, I, went, I knelt down, and I took the, you could see me take the mouthpiece out of his mouth because he would have gagged. Now, I don't think many referees during those days uh, did that. I think it's something you know, knew mm -hmm. at that particular time. Well, I'll ask you about one that I'm sure you remember, the fight of the century, Ali Frazier won at Madison Square Garden. That's a fight everybody, even people that are born in the past couple of years know about that yeah, fight. Yeah, and there was a lot of competition to who, uh, to who would be referee that fight. And <clears throat> I can recall in the Daily News and Bill, Callow, Bill Gallo's column, where he had seven referees. Any one of them were qualified to do the fight. That's a little suspect. I don't think all of them are qualified, but I still sometimes look and I'll say, did I do all that? And the reason I come out with that expression, I received a call from uh, <clears throat> Muhammad's office, I'd say maybe about four or five years ago. He had a cocktail party at Tom House's and uh, <clears throat> when I walked in, Ali had already arrived. And when I came in, I went over to give him a hug. And he stood up and he hugged me. He said, my favorite ref, my favorite ref. Now the purpose of this whole evening was to, to go from the beginning of his boxing life right to the, the moment that we spoke. And uh, he suddenly became very, he doesn't say too much, but I'm going to imitate as what he does. He just stared in space. And he said, and he said, I can't believe I did all that. I really can't believe I did all that. 
Now I've never recovered from that. That, that, that it was just a sad situation. Now, when I look back on my career, I could use the same you terminology. You could use the same ex exact words. Yeah. Arthur, you you have a love affair with with boxing. Uh, a lot of the boxing industry community seems to have had a love affair with you the last five decades. Tell us. I'm going to ask you a couple of simple questions, and just give me a you know one or two word answer. The greatest fight that you ever officiated. There have been so many. Well, tell me five I of mean, them. I mean, well, like uh, um, Escalera and Arguello was a great, great, great fight. And, uh, I mean, how can you deny the fact that Sugar Ray Robin was a great fight, Hagler, all of them. And even way, way, way back, you take uh, Monzon and Monte Carlo, I refereed that fight. And, uh, it... it of course, Fraser Ali number is number one as far as the hype and and all of that. But uh, it's well, another great story from the Mercanti household here in Garden City, Long Island, is the fact that your sons, who are all physically fit to this day, got their initial training in the kitchen, where they could never come to a uh, a dinner table or even a lunch table without doing ten pull uh, ten pull pull ups. Is it? Yeah, for chin ups. Chin ups. Chin -ups. That's right. As a matter of fact, uh, we have a, a physical fitness family. My wife is in physical fitness. She has classes now. And I retired from 15 years of doing the classes myself. I established a, uh, a routine in my house. I went out and bought a chinning bar, and I put it up between the hallway and the kitchen. And uh, I established a rule that no one sits down to eat unless they do at least five or six or seven, or even 10. As a matter of fact, I'm going to show you guys how to do it, and you're going to follow me. So I'd get up and I'd do my 10. And they get up, even if they almost split a gut, they would do it. And really, I have four Schwarzeneggers, four sons, and they're all in great shape. They're all mm. rippling. And I have a lot of the young guys who come in and say hello to me. They get up on the chinning bar. I don't talk to you until I get on the chinning bar. October, uh, October 19th. At the Plata Deutsch restaurant in Franklin Square, Long Island, there's going to be a wonderful boxing show. Uh, Paolo Wolak, an undefeated middleweight, is going to headline. It's going to be a tremendous night of boxing. Arthur McCanty, a wonderful man, is going to be honored there. He's going to be on hand to sign copies of his books. And he's also going to be on hand to regale anybody with stories of his more than a half a century in boxing. I can't wait to be there. Thank you so much, Thank you.